well, we have a quorum, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda? I think Bill, we wanted to add. That's right. Discussion on the. We can't hear you, Bill. You're on, you got to unmute. Click on that little mic. <laughs> yeah, we're really far away. There you are. How's that? <laughs> All right. I'd like to suggest that we have a discussion item on um, the design of the upcoming new Hayes Hill Bridge. Great. I uh, think that's a good discussion. We'll add that at 9.3. All right, is there any additional adjustments to the agenda? Okay, being none, uh, move on to the consent agenda, approve the minutes of Monday, June 3rd, Monday, June 10th, and Tuesday, June 23rd. I move that we accept the minutes as presented for um, those three, uh, three minutes. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Uh, is there any public comment? Do we have any public on? Um... Hi, JC. Hi. We're on uh, public comment right now. I don't think we have any public on, so. Okay, we'll move on to board comment. Um, I have, I have a yep, go ahead, Bill. I just want to celebrate and express, I think, for the entire board appreciation for the hard work and diligence of the supporters of public education in the White River Valley. Uh, our teachers uh, support our principal, our administrative team led by Jamie, um, Lindy, uh, PTOs to have a very positive uh, special meeting that overwhelmingly said our budget voted on May 7th was valid and should go forward. Um, we all know the consequences if the vote was to reconsider, we wouldn't have a budget, we wouldn't have tax bills, it'd be very hard to, um, the cost of tax anticipation notes would go up. So all that uncertainty was avoided by uh, the support, of, and I think it's overwhelming support, and it speaks to, in my opinion, this, this solid support that public education is important, and that the our study of the community um, is doing a good job in very challenging times. On top of that, uh, we had three articles about switching from uh, in-person voting that goes all the way back to the founding of our country. We lost study ballot, but they missed that, but that was overwhelmingly rejected, each one of those articles. That speaks to the fact that it's important to gather together as a community to ask the, to ask the question, hard questions, get answered, and then with an education and awareness, plus a wonderful um, annual meeting report, vote. But we achieved something that I think is just extraordinary. I'm not totally surprised by him by the magnitude of the vote, 117. To 33, and uh, whenever we have a tough time and we difficult issue, we have to make hard decisions. Let's never forget 117 to 33. Thank you. Yeah, good job, everyone. That was excellent. Thank you, Bill. Uh, is there any other board comment? Okay, um, I do. I have the. Um, 
uh, the scholarship committee had been working on um, one of our uh, endowments, which was the wing endowment, was a specific endowment for uh, scholarships to high school students. Um, and the language of the will um, uh, stated that it needed to come from um, graduates of the uh, Rochester High School. And so the endowment committee uh, sought forth to modify the um, orders of the trust. To, so they went to probate court, and that has been ruled on, and they have um, approved our language change. Um, and so the original language was um, uh, to the Rochester High School Scholarship Fund in loving memory of my mother, Lena Ellis Wing, class of 1899. One third of the remaining residue of my estate to be held in trust, safely invested in the income only expended annually for scholarships to members of the graduating class of Rochester High School and recipients to be chosen by the faculty of said high school. And we have modified the uh, trust to uh, the beginning part the same, um, held in trust, safely invested in income only, expended uh, annually for scholarships to graduating high school seniors from the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District chosen by the Rochester Stockbridge School District's Scholarship Committee. So that's exciting um, to have that in place for the upcoming uh, kids and, and into perpetuity. So that was, um, yeah, that was a, a, a great win. So, um, yes, Bill. I don't mean to talk too much, but I, I do want to give kudos to our chair because she's the one that really got deep on what are the Rochester endowments, what they mean, when they based on, what are the financial reports? She established a subcommittee that I'm honored to be on. And I'm just saying, kudos, this is one of the results that we can actually free up scholarship money for um, both uh, um, students from both communities. And I, Amy, thank you very much. Yeah, it's exciting, and um, I look forward to get back, getting uh, the endowment committee back up and um, moving, getting back to meeting more regularly. Uh, summers goes by fast. <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to comment on um, that was brought up to me, uh, the, uh, the vote that we had and the meeting that we had, which was um, it was wonderful. The town clerks. Uh, came up with a wonderful way of checking people in and keeping track of who was our registered voters, voters um, a request. And it did feel a little um, segregated. You go in one door, you go in one, the other door, um, to maybe talk to them about a, um, being able to come together and come in the same door, vote in the same place. Maybe Rochester's on one side of the door, Stockbridge is on the other. One person comes in at a time, and you either turn left or you turn right. And it both goes in the box at the end, um, you know. And I see that as more unity for us in our communities. And I um, just wanted to kind of put that out there to the board to see if that is something um, we, as a board, would like to recommend that the clerks come up with a more. The clerks just combine uh, registered voters and maybe color code. Stockbridge is one color, Rochester is another, and have multiple people checking in. I'm not sure of the it. laws of it. You know um, I mean, just mix it, but make it simplified. But I guess I was kind of wondering the overall feeling from the board about that, trying to get it a more together yeah. approach rather totally. than. Um, yeah. You put it in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt, you know, very yeah. Yeah. segregated yeah. with, you, yeah. it, but, it, but it worked. And, and I understand, and I'm so happy that they were able to come up with a method mm -hmm. um, that was was clear, that there was no chaos. And, and so I, um, if the board uh, agrees, I'd like to ask them to try to come up with some other ideas of being able to get together a little bit better. It might yeah, slow I, things up. It would slow things up. I, I, we do would have to take that into consideration for if there was a a uh, paper ballot. Um, or if there was question. a way to combine, like I said, combine registered voters, but you have A through, you know, whatever, oh, right. H. On one here. side. Yeah, and so it's split up alphabetically and not by town. Yeah, that's, that's a good suggestion. You know. 
But yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. Hearing no obvious objections. Because they could could combine the vote, voter lists into one big that, yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we dropped Katie off at, at camp and it was, you know, your A's through your F's mm -hmm. sign in here. In this I think that would work better because you could almost do it in three or four. Yeah. And because would, they had, because it got confusing to having two clerks checking in at one table and then people are throwing them in the box, but it was like, oh, did, did you know, when, did you get them, you know, right. rather than right. just being responsible for a certain just For section. a smaller yeah, section. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I think we should pursue that, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any uh, further board comment? Okay, well, let's move on to reports to the board then. Principal's report. Yes. So you have your, or my report in front of you. Um, one thing I'll add or highlight, but I'm pretty sure it's an add is we had about, um, we had a full One Planet summer program Yay. for all weeks offered, which is great at about 35 kids each week. Nice. So that was great. And of those 35 and outside of those 35, but, um, there were about 10 kiddos who received some sort of extended school year support or some tutoring as in addition to our One Planet programming. So they had a great time. Um, and it was the first year that we did it two weeks here in Stockbridge and then three weeks in Rochester. So some changes, which seemed to work well this year. Nice. So that was great. Um, and then the other thing is under number three that I really want to emphasize, because we're talking about it later tonight, um, the Agency of Education has approved Rochester Stockbridge Unified District's continuous improvement goals for the 2024-2025 school year. Uh, the three goals, which had to fall under um, safe and healthy schools or students and academic goals, were um, that we will decrease the percentage of students with chronic absenteeism, defined as students who are absent 10% or more school days for any reason, excused or unexcused, from 22%, which was the number I presented in the spring, to 15%. And we will increase the percentage of students who meet or exceed expectations, English language arts from 40% to 60%. And, and then in mathematics, we will increase the percentage of students who meet or exceed expectations from 62% to 80%. And this is directly tied into like our things we have to progress monitor throughout the year and report back onto the agency of education and ties into some of our title funding as well that we receive. Um, so you'll see later in the agenda under action items, there's gonna be a request for you guys to move to accept or approve those. Like I said, the Agency of Education already accepted them. Okay. But others so are, These are numbers you? That our leadership team yeah. came up with and looked at based on um, some action steps that we're looking to take. Okay. Throughout the school year. Now this, so this isn't something the state expects, or, or that's what we're, we're working towards, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Great. Mm. Does anybody have any questions for Lindy in regards to her report? Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people think that summertime people just take take it off, and um, those who are fortunate enough to have uh, paid vacations, I can, can go on vacations. This report is a demonstration again that our school leadership and our teachers uh, working together. I'm not taking the summer off. They're planning, organizing, learning, sharing, communicating, connecting. And that's what makes our sense so impressive. That's what's the reason we got 117 votes. People aren't, might not be aware of the hard work underneath their confidence, but this is an example of that. I also want to point out that the goals that the um, state achieved are way beyond. Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, way beyond the state's um, expectations. So I'm, uh, we're talking about really pushing hard and seeing if we can do 
what a lot of people in school systems believe is on is not possible. So I um, I just just love that. And uh, I also like the idea of the PTO being actively involved with our Tunbridge Fair outreach program. This is one of many things we want to do to attract students and their parents to come to us to think about us as a very viable educational uh, opportunity for the children. Thank you. So just to be clear, it's that's at the Rochester Harvest Fest, not the Tunbridge Fair. Right. There is a WRBSU table at the Tunbridge Fair, but there's a, going to be a conjunct, one in conjunction with the PTO that's just Rochester Stockbridge at the Harvest Fair. Cool. I want to spread out. Yeah, that's great. Great. Any further questions for Lindy? Okay, let's move on to the superintendent's report. So you have my report in hand. It's been a, uh, a really productive, but I would also say opportunity to recharge batteries this summer. We've, you know, other than our special meeting, didn't have any emergencies in July. So that was nice across the supervisory union. Um, and so, you know, I tried to highlight um, just, as, just like Lindy did, the work that we had uh, occurring. The admin team, which is made up of our, you know, central office administration and then also uh, principals across the SU. We're on a retreat last week at the Vermont Principals Association uh, Annual Professional Development Opportunity in Killington, uh, which was great. I think we all took nuggets from their PD, but then also were able to meet uh, all day Thursday to do uh, work specific to the SU. Um, and then we came together again today in Bethel to continue that work. Um, I felt really good about the positive energy of the team and, and real focus on our strategic plan and our communications and outreach plan. The only other thing I wanted to really highlight in the report is that uh, all board members will be receiving a sign up from me either tomorrow or Wednesday to start signing up for the booths at the Tunbridge Fair. Uh, you'll see some principal and, and central office admin names on it already. The goal is to try to have two people at the booth at all times. Um, this year, we've made it much more interactive. There's going to be a uh, wheel that folks can spin, and it'll land on uh, some type of SUY garb um, that someone can win. And we're going to have uh, simple questions that are facts that highlight our achievement and accomplishments across all of our districts in the SU. Person gets the answer right, then they get a pencil, or they'll get a sticker, or they'll get a T-shirt. We've created WRVSU t-shirts that have our community school logo on the front, but on the back, our newly adopted uh, portrait of a learner is gonna be on the back of the t-shirt as a way to start to communicate that out to the greater public. So um, I'm really excited about that. So know that those signups will be coming. Um, and otherwise, I'll entertain any questions folks may have. I was curious if the board, um, outside of these questions, is if it, I think we'll probably have just about enough time for me to give a bylaws committee update. I don't know if okay. you were at the last one or not, Patrick. Do you want me to do that right now, just yes. so we make certain I, you don't miss it? Yes. So the policy committee has been meeting on the SUY bylaws. Um, the good news is most of the wordsmithing in regards to just how we do business now versus how we were doing it previously has been cleaned up. One of the big things that you'll note in language cleanup is that the policy committee is gonna suggest that the executive board actually be removed from the bylaws because it's not a board that we've used in the last two years. And with the use of hybrid meetings, the feeling is, is that we've been very good at getting quorums for full board meetings to do business. And prior, the executive board was really just leveraged because sometimes we wouldn't get quorums of the full board. Um, and so that is the biggest language piece change there. There's still discussion about the makeup of the committee. They're going to take that up again next Tuesday. The last version that they were discussing was the idea of right now all of our districts have three members that are voting members. That includes unified districts and single town districts. The, it seemed like the single town districts, which are Stratford and Sharon, seemed supportive of the notion of 
if they were able to continue to have three voting members, but the unified districts would all get four, meaning First Branch, Rochester, Stockbridge, and White River Unified District. And the history behind that is originally when the SU was formed, every operating district had, was a town district, and, and they had three members. And when those operating town districts came together for unification, they actually went from six down to three. And so the idea was that those districts would go back up to four, and Sharon and Stratford would remain with three, and Granville Hancock, due to statute, would still have the one voting member. Our quorum size actually doesn't change by doing this because we'd go from a 16 member board to a 19 member board. And so it doesn't change the voting quorum size. Um, so that's going to be discussed further next Tuesday, but it seemed like that was sort of the direction of the, of the will of the policy committee at that point. They haven't discussed it since June, so we'll see what uh, next Tuesday brings. I think their hope is to have a draft ready for the full board's review in August. And then if there's any changes that need to be made, that would occur and hopefully we could actually have some revised bylaws in place in September, which have not been addressed since the mergers occurred throughout the supervisory union. So those are the bylaws update as well. Okay, great. I think Bill had a question. Yes. Uh Bill, please. Uh, this is just my opinion, uh, but from first hearing about the idea of changing the board side of the SU board based on whether you're a, a, a combined town district or a single district, um, strikes me, I could have that wrong, strikes me as going in the opposite direction of what we've tried to do. All the SU and our superintendent team is to be one community. Um, so if we went on this road, then why isn't it based on number of students? Why isn't it based on number of schools? Why isn't it based on population? Why isn't it based on the size of the budget? All those things in my mind are irrelevant. They're relevant because as long as I've been here, it's been a very short time, I don't recall one vote of the SU board that pitted a larger district versus a, a, a single district. I just don't remember us ever falling down on this thing about they're bigger, we're smaller, we should. We came together and almost every vote was unanimous. So I think this is a it, big deal, but I think symbolically this moves us in the wrong direction and I would urge the policy to consider that. three members of each board <laughs> to show up and now we want four, right. you know, I don't know. Yeah. Bill, just so you know, the, the concerns you raise have been concerns that I've raised as, as the superintendent. So they've heard those, but I think board members should con continue to share those concerns. Um, again, I don't think that this was ever coming from necessarily a direct board members concern, but there were some constituents within a district that had concerns and one of the constituents was also the president of the VSBA who had lobbied hard to get this changed in statute where you a district board could petition the state board to change the SU board makeup based on what you described the size of the district so that's I think that that's why the policy committee was looking into this because there was some concern around pressure to that board to try to pursue that, which they do not want to pursue. They have not said that. What they said is they would take it up with the full board to see their thoughts on it. Well, let me know when and where you're meeting, and if I'm available, I'd love to come and share my thoughts. Yeah, it'll be next Tuesday, Bill. I'll share the agenda with you. You all will get it, but I'll make certain you get it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Bill. 
Okay, um, I guess I didn't realize that I was on the agenda. I thought I was just right. saying I don't do it in, in board comments. So, uh, but next is 6.5 Rochester Endowment Task Force update, which I did update uh, during the board comment, uh, but I will open it up again if anybody has any further questions or uh, discussion um, in regards to that. And uh, like I said before, uh, we haven't met in a little while, but I look forward to us uh, jumping back on that bus. And we've got to get Tara, too. Oh, we got to loop back to Tara. Yes, we do. Thank I'm you so much. I'm going to go jump into Granville. Tara, you stay with them to get your action item that you need done, and then I'll start with Jihad, and then I'll come back. Okay, great. So we're going to do 6.3, the business manager's report, please. Mine is super quick. Good evening, everyone. Just outline what's happening here in the business office. Uh, the month of August is when a large chunk of all of our fiscal year 24 state and federal reporting um, is all due within 45 days of the close of the fiscal year. Uh, so that's primarily what we're working on, and we do that for all seven entities and wrapping up all of our final fiscal year 24 expenditures. We also had the closure of our pre-audit and the pre-audit testing, and then the auditors will be back um, as of right now, the week of September 9th to finalize our FY24 audit. Well, that's, that's, my that's wonderful to hear the time frame on that. It's, that, that just really is great. Great. Does anybody have any questions for Tara in regards to her report? Excellent. Well, thank you for your hard work in the office there, Tara. Okay, so uh, we do not have a celebration of learning. No. <laughs> we'll look forward to that once the school year starts again. Yes. Great. Okay, well, we'll move on to action items then. Uh, we have policy uh, F10 investment policy. Now, um, is this warned for uh, ex action for this? Okay. So this is uh, a uh, policy that's been approved by the um, SU board. Uh, our board has its own uh, investment policy, but I don't see that as conflicting with this one at all. Um, it falls underneath it. Um, is there any discussion or would anybody want to present anything on this? <laughs> okay. I'd like to move, like to move uh, that we adopt or approve the investment policy unless the F10 as stated in our packets. Uh, second. Excellent. We have a motion and a second to approve the policy F10. Is there any further discussion? Yes, um, I think the first paragraph where it says principal is the wrong principal. Grammatically? Uh, it's not in front of me anymore, but I thought it said preservation of principal. Wrong principal. I could be wrong. I don't know somebody who knows who has better English. <laughs> Google does. Google. Right. Are they talking about Lindy? No, they're not. <laughs> Preserving. It looks like they're talking about Lindy. Okay, well that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> it does. It's spelled the way as same way in investments as it is. as a principal. Okay. Yes, versus like your morals or your values. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for checking on that, and thank no. you for br for bringing <laughs> that up, Cynthia. I, Google says. <laughs> That investment um, principle is spelled the same as our uh, lovely principle. <laughs> Not um, that I'm doing any of that. But. Okay. Is there any further discussion? We don't want to preserve the principle. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Having no further discussion, all in favor of approving policy F10, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. That is passed. Okay. Um, uh, 8.2, Community National Bank Online Viewing of Accounts. Tara? So this is for 
me, I just need to officially in your minutes that you as the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District authorize me to have online viewing access of your bank accounts with Community National Bank. If you remember correctly, those were your tax anticipation notes. Question? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, Tara, by that you mean not our board members' bank accounts, but you're referring to our set of bank accounts. That is that? Community National Bank, yes, your tax anticipation bank accounts. <laughs> okay, just, just checking. Well, no, she wants to see yours to make sure you can fund our next uh, big dinner, you know. <laughs> I make a motion to. Uh, to authorize Tara to um, uh, have online uh, access. Yes, to have online access to Community National Bank uh, accounts. Second. Excellent. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Great. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Yeah. So moved. Okay. It's 2024, right? It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is online now. I had somebody say something about writing checks the other day. I'm like, checks? <laughs> I haven't paid for anything with a check. <laughs> like, Don't force me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. All right, 8.5, FY25 Continuous Improvement Plan. Yes. So um, when we submitted our continuous improvement plan, we put that um, we would bring this forward in front of the board um, for board approval of our continuous improvement goals for the uh, FY 2025. So those goals that I read to you under three in your report. They have already been accepted by the Agency of Education. It's a little backward. Okay, excellent. So it was those three. Yeah. Yeah, those three. Okay, wonderful. Right, and those three are... Um, uh, decreasing the chronic absenteeism mm -hmm. and to increase the percentage of students who meet or exceed expectations in English uh, language arts and to increase the percentage of students who meet or exceed math expectations in mathematics. I think these are wonderful goals and uh, I look forward to um, seeing the progress and um, so I guess we have to accept the uh, continuous improvement goals plan. So move. Second. Excellent. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I just have a yes. question. Yeah. Do these results, like, does it affect um, what the state... Uh, what the state provides for funding? Um, like, if you get better results, do you get more funding, essentially? Does it work that way? No, it's usually tied to uh, your free and reduced lunch population is how the funding. Yeah. But what it does tie to is how you can use those funds, right? Like, so by putting uh, a goal in there about English language arts and mathematics that allows us to use some title funds to help support our interventionist positions. Gotcha. So it, it directly ties like a strategic plan. Our absenteeism goal, like that's gonna, we will receive title funds to help support our winter wellness program because that attracts kids and we have a higher attendance rate on sure. these days. So it's not necessarily the amount, but it's more like the strategy and how yeah. you can help offset that. Does that yeah, answer yeah. your question? It's, yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, I wish it worked that way. Great, <laughs> <laughs> okay. is there any other questions? Discussion? All right, we have a motion on a second. All in favor? of accepting the continuous improvement plan for FY25, signify by saying aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Discussion. Um, 9.1, board retreat planning and scheduling. Let's plan, a, let's plan another retreat. Um, oh, fire nice. Or fire nice. <laughs> They don't have a salad bar. I do think we can come up with some good details later. Um, I think that it's a great opportunity for us to have open discussion and, and ideas and, and, and think about vision and think about um, 
think about where, how we want to grow and where, what kind of, what our vision is moving forward because we just really, um, we just want to continue to grow our programming and to grow. And to grow mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. what type of day? Yes. I also think that we will probably be needing to discuss uh, uh, use of the high school if that comes about. So yes. That would be another big issue. Yeah, opportunities that right. we. S it should or should um, the sale go through, and the yes, community is able to uh, pursue what the their goals are in that space. How can we um, how can we uh, embrace those opportunities and use be in conjunction with them to, to really improve our programming and uh, to you know what kind of value do we see in that growth? So I think that would all be great discussions. Um, uh, so. When are we thinking? Uh, September, beginning of October. Is the um, has the town has there been a um, date set for a Rochester town vote on the building? Uh, that's on the the, uh, the that's on the election day on the 5th. On the 5th of November? Right. Okay. And we have a couple of uh, informational meetings and right. before that. Okay. Um, do, I mean, do we want to look at September? Or is that tough with school getting started? I think our goal should be in August, and we're, past, we're probably not going to do it in August. So September starts the school year. Too. We're talking about looking back and looking forward. It's still the beginning of the school year yeah. rather than into the school year. So my recommendation, let's see if we can get together in September. September. Um, what is Tunbridge Fair? Is 13, that the 12, 13, 14. 15. Okay. Uh, JC, do you, do you know when Harvest Fair is? Uh, That's the same weekend. As the Tunbridge Fair? Or or it's the 7th. Yeah, I was going to say 7th. It is? It is the 7th. So it was the Saturday. Oh, 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 sorry. It used to always be the same weekend. I was looking at August. Yeah, it's definitely the is, is our goal for a Saturday uh, in, or, uh, or is it an evening, or? Why don't we just do the last? Saturday is good. I like it. Saturday. What about the 31st? I'm more to be on, a on a Saturday. What about what about a Sunday? I'm also like we can spend more time generally on a Saturday than the evening. Yes, and so um, with Saturday. What about a Sunday? The day after the harvest fair. Yeah, I was trying to look at the beginning of September or the very end of, of August. That last weekend in August or the first weekend in September. Okay, so we'll uh, stay away from that one. Yeah. Okay. Call. Good call. Yeah, good call. I'm fine with the eighth. What about Sunday the eighth? It's good for me. You're going to check one more calendar. Oh. I'm okay on the eighth. Okay. And so. Cynthia? I'm fine with the eighth. Okay. So we just have to. And Lindy? Yeah, it's just a long weekend to be at Harvest Fair. And and then, uh, OK. Yeah, that's all. It's OK, though. You can make it work. And then potentially a board, like, are we going to meet on Labor Day for a board meeting on the 2nd? I'm not trying to add more logistical issues. So. Just thinking, like, uh, yeah. is that a big commitment? Like. Well, it is the end of a long weekend, and probably that is the last hurrah for our families. Um, okay. Should we move it to Tuesday? Yeah, for some, I don't, for some reason, I don't have any of the SU stuff up on my calendar right now. Oh, I don't either. Okay. Um, it's showing up on mine. Okay, so d does, and is there anything on Tuesday for no. the SU? No. It can't be. It can't be. There's stuff on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, 
I hear um, with Harvest Fair, a retreat, and then if we were to move our school board meeting to Monday, that that is a lot. So I propose we either look for another date for our school board meeting or maybe look at September 15th. Oh, the Tumbridge Fair is still going on on, the, on a Sunday, isn't it? Why not the 31st or 1st? Oh, yeah, yeah. Labor Day is super Labor. early this God. year. Gosh, ah. It's yeah, that's me why. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Because Labor Day yeah. is usually the second. I have it because I have it written on Yeah. Me. Right, Labor Day is the second. Um, so unless we bumped it a whole week earlier to the 26th of August before school starts, but for our September meeting. Oh. Uh, I have a welcome back night, like, for families. Yeah, okay. Offer you space. That's 26. <laughs> okay. Well, what is... What? Maybe? Yep, I just... What is everybody's feelings? Well, can we just move our, our monthly meeting from the 2nd to the 9th? I think we can. Move our monthly meeting from the 2nd to the 9th. Have though. it after the Harvest Fair. Yep. And, and we'll have um, our retreat the day before. On this Sunday, the 8th? I'm fine with that. Is, it, is that um, everybody want to hang out that much? <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be a lot for you, though, Lindy. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. No. Let's yes. Not. Doesn't really. Go ahead, Bill. I know it would be rude, but spending an extra three hours on Sunday morning talking about the future of our kids and our system. Knowing full well the next evening for a two hour meeting or less, we're going to talk about what's going on. I don't think that's too much for us to ask. I think we should show, because I, I think other district boards have trouble getting together. We should be the example that we can spend three hours, nine to 12, whatever it is, talking about important stuff, getting hired together, uh, learning from one another. And I really strongly urge that we do Sunday the 8th, 9 to 12, and 12 30, and then Monday evening we celebrate education and we go into the fall. But if, if we got to let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Uh, Pat? I, I don't think it's a lot to ask of us, our board members, but it is a lot to ask of Wendy. <laughs> So she'll be on, at the Harvest Fair yeah, she's gonna be responsible running the booth that. there on Saturday. I guess I would like to protect Sundays. I feel like in my house, that's the one day yeah, 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 that yeah. neither one of us work. <laughs> so so um, you, if possible, I mean, if, if it's not possible, retreat, things happen. But. To the 21st. I do believe that I have a... Um, I think that's a wedding that I have to go to. Um, I but I could do any other day of the week that we could do it that week. A meeting or a, a retreat? A meeting. Yeah, or can we even move the meeting to the 16th? It doesn't get it off of Sunday for you, but it. Yeah, yeah I'm good with the 16th. Our meeting, just move the meeting to the 16th? I just am concerned yeah. if we try, I, I hear you mm -hmm. with Sunday, and please just say no if you can't do it. But I just fear that if we try to do another Saturday, we're getting into October. Unless, unless we can do it in. Well, what time is the Harvest Fair? When, when, is it, when does that oh, go? Oh, I don't even know the answer to that. It's like. You know, I mean, I it's going at early in the morning. What's that? It ends at four. Ends no, but what time does it start? 10? 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. I think it'll be 10. It's a long day, though, to... Yeah, no, I was wondering if we could do a morning retreat on Saturday right. or something. Yeah. yeah, I'm performing the Harvest Fair. So yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm setting up. I'm setting up. Um... Do we do a Friday evening retreat? That's, like, I mean... That's, I think, I just think during the week, I mean, you know how hard you're working yeah. in this tough to I mean transition and the weekends aren't any different <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't have child care on a, on a week on a week uh, I'm flexible I can do anything so what you know right it's up to you guys 
Um, do we want to bump it up to August 17th? That's a Saturday. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just have yeah. family things already. Twenty fourth. Does that work? So uh, the twenty fourth of no, I have a uh, okay. grandchild's um, birthday party at my house, so <laughs> I am hosting that. So sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. I gotta go. Sorry, I gotta go. Um, so. What do you back to <laughs> September? Do you want to just say? No to a Sunday, or do you want to do Saturday. Sunday the eighth, and then our meeting maybe the fall on the sixteenth. Saturday the twenty eighth. Oh, I had an idea. Saturday the twenty eighth of September. Yeah, why don't we just do the twenty eighth? Wait until Harvest Fair. Harvest Fair is over. Let's just let that roll. Okay, and, and maybe we can. Um, uh, Maybe we could come up with some uh, thought-provoking questions yeah. for us to be thinking in the Bring next couple the weeks. Um, you know, what do you call that? Like a brainstorm. Yeah, prompt. a prompt. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about September 28th, Saturday, September 28th, for a retreat? Love it. It's good for me. Okay. Do you see? Uh, yeah, one second. I'm just trying to look at... All your calendars, I know. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple going on. Should be fine for me. Uh, Cynthia? It's fine. Okay. Lock it in before anybody comments any further. We're going to do a retreat on Saturday, September 28th. Um, do we want to do the morning? Get it over? Yep. Nine to, so nine we'll to 12. We'll do our best thinking. Okay, so we'll meet at nine, maybe meet at nine, and then we'll go, go till lunch. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to move our meeting from the second to the ninth? I think we would should go ahead and move our meeting as well, uh, just to. Uh, it is Labor Day. Let uh, all families have. Does that work for everybody else to move our regular scheduled September Ooh. meeting from the second to the ninth? Yes. Ah, oh, three day weekend. Yes. I'm excited for that. Okay. <laughs> A three day weekend. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so that is that. Uh, is there any further discussion about the board retreat planning or scheduling? How do, how do we uh, um, how do we want to structure our retreat this time? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know the last one. There's mission and vision, and like we looked at yeah. the survey result. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, one thing. We did have a facilitator the last time that helped. I, I do, like, I would really like for our board to take seriously starting to think about what it would look like to, to do a full merge of grade levels, maintaining both campuses. Reconfiguration, and with that, getting a if we could figure out how we would present that to our voters um, and in a way that maybe it's two budgets, uh, you know, our regular budget that we provide and then what it would look like in that structure. Right, well, I think we would you need know. to discuss the concept first. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maintaining two buildings, but yeah. just ha reconfiguring some of the, um, <clears throat> the way that yeah. kids are I think that that is um, would be a great opportunity to just sit and round table about it yeah. pros and cons um, just kind of get I think yeah. that would be a great mm -hmm. idea Yeah, and whether we develop a side committee yep. to yep. handle it to try to study yeah. it yeah yep. um, I, I think ideally to have a timeline set with this so we can move it in a way that we can hopefully if it's something that we f as, as a committee say after that is this, if we find it something feasible to present to um, the community then 
you know, being able to do that next year, I think, would be ideal. Well, I think that would definitely yeah. be all part of the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We can write that down yeah. to make sure we hit on that point mm -hmm. um, as, the, as the discussion. Okay. Um, but I do think of a roundtable of that and yeah. also um, of the opportunity in the um, that we have with the high school building yeah. um, and the potential uh, mm -hmm. things that are going in, t in there um, mm -hmm. with how we can partner with them to really um, grow. Because that's what we want to do is grow. We should probably discuss, you know, how much we want to involve the community in that this decision. Um, we would probably want, you know, in all informational. Decisions. Well, not just informational, but run it by the the, uh, the the constituents and see what they feel about it about merging. Yeah, merging classes. I mean, I I think even I don't think we need to. Uh, we don't have to have a vote, but we should. Uh, no, but I think even with the committee, why do we why do we need to uh, only allow it to just be our board members? Why can't we find a way to include some community members yes. oh, well, in the committee? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, um, right. A study committee yeah, to study the totally. to, to study this yeah. concept. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and maybe it's at the harvest fair. Maybe there's a survey there mm -hmm. for interest in. It's yeah. an excellent idea. Yeah. Which falls before the retreat, so it might be a little difficult, but I think we could hash out a concept, or yeah. maybe we come up with a committee now. And well, maybe, um, I'm not sure what the booth is at the fair, but maybe there. It's a little bit of PTO. It's just like a way to engage with families, right? So there's some PTO information, there's some games, um, there's some information about Rochester Soccer School. So it would be it would be easy enough to be like, are you interested in participating in, in study, study committee? Right, not like, like not super high end, but like are you interested in participating? Keeping it broad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, yeah. School, the, the school board is looking and then we could collect for interested in contact uh, constituents. A grade level merge while maintaining both campuses or something. Just yeah. something super I would even just say like participating in some sort of ARSA future planning for configuration, or it yeah. just really general. I don't want yeah. to yeah. Right. put anything yeah. out there since yeah. we won't. Right, because this is, this is the beginning of a, a conversation. We have, yeah. we have a long way to go with this before we're. But it's a good opportunity yeah. to, to get some community. people involved yeah. you know, before it gets cold and people are. Bill. Yeah, I, um, I think this is worth discussing and strategizing and coming up with a methodology that is sound and the results of that process will be legitimate in the eyes of our two communities, Stockbridge, Rochester. Um, I have a little hesitancy about asking people at a fair what you think. That's not a representative sample. Of what our communities think. The last two representative samples in Stockbridge overwhelmingly talked about the value of having our elementary schools. So I'm not against what Patrick says. I'm I'm really glad that you're bringing it up, Patrick, but I think this is something that we can start talking about at our retreat. But let's let's come up with a strategy of how we're gonna roll this out and what the objectives are and, and how do we do it in a sound framework that people can believe in, no matter what the results. And I'm not quite sure we're, we're there yet, so I would um, suggest that we table this discussion and have it um, uh, later on uh, at the appropriate time and form. OK. Great. OK, so let's we uh, discussed the continuous improvement plan. So now let's discuss 9.3, design of the new Gaysville Bridge. Um, if Bill, you want to take this away, you um, brought this to my attention. Sure, and I propose this. It's 6, 655, so I want to keep it brief. Um, those of you that are not aware, the Gaysville Bridge back to the flood of 1827. And uh, we put in this bridge.
church that has served us well over almost 100 years. And thanks to the largesse of the federal government, um, we have the opportunity now to build a new bridge. And that process is well underway. Uh, right now it looks like a two-lane bridge rather than a one-lane bridge. And um, um, that process is happening. My discussion with the select board was that, are you going to include a sidewalk to the bridge? Um, and they bantered it around and asked the B trans to come up with us a design with the sidewalk, and they didn't have any problems doing that, and they modified the plan to include a sidewalk. Uh, and if I understand this like where it says, basically said, no, we don't want a sidewalk. Now this has major implications for us, and that's why I wanted out not to decide, not to do anything, but I want to have this on the agenda at our next meeting. Why is that? Well, the Gaysville community walked, if they aren't driven, the kids walk over this bridge to get to the bus to go to the Stockton Central School. When they come home, they can stop, they, the bus stops at the post office, and if their parents aren't there, they walk across the same bridge to get to their homes. I look at it. Most of these kids have parents there. Why is that? It's because the bridge doesn't have a sign. It isn't safe. I don't care how fast you're going. We also have people in the Gaysville that walk to the post office. They don't have a sidewalk. We have people visiting White River Park, and they want to go to the swimming pool, or they want to stand on the bridge and watch the kayak race. There's no sidewalk. So I think there's a lot of reasons that there's been no attempt to outreach to communities saying, what do you think? Do we, do we need this sidewalk? This sidewalk is not going to cost us anything. It's just a federal dollar deal. Almost all, every penny. Um, so my urging is that, because um, I certainly, I've got to be in my body, we should not build a hundred year structure without a sidewalk. It violates context sensitive design, it, it, it conflicts with complete road um, philosophy. And so I wanted to alert you and add uh, that we have that on our agenda for our September meeting and I plan to, to work with others to try to have this as a public discussion where people are aware of it, they understand the pros and the cons and they make a sound decision. I don't think it's safe for our kids to walk across a bridge, a true plain bridge, in the street. I really don't. Whether they're going to the bus stop or coming home. That's just not right. Never mind the people my age going to the post office or going down to the campground to a swim or anything else. We deserve to have pedestrians have as own rights as motors. And that includes a single sidewalk. So that's my pitch. Um, and I just want to make sure that we're on board and take a position on this, and, I'm, uh, and I hope we can do that at our next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, it makes sense to me. Um, so you're looking, the, the uh, process would be for us to recommend to the, to the select board that we, that they revisit the idea of a sidewalk. And this sidewalk is for the finished bridge then. Yeah. I mean, yes, okay, I, I, I thought originally he was talking about a sidewalk that was temporary for while the bridge was, was out. No, this so. would be the part of the new bridge. They have two lanes, they all want two lanes, and instead of two lanes and a two foot edge on either side, Right. You take those two feet, put them combined into a four foot sidewalk yeah. on the upstream side. Um, and it isn't a cost thing, it's, it's certainly a safety thing. And it's not an environmental thing. It's not like the sidewalk will somehow affect the flow or the. Uh, right, the. The feet are large and small. Um, and, uh, but it's important, I think, we're the. We're responsible for these kids, along with their parents. And we have a decision now to make that it's made right and will last for the next hundred years, well beyond our 
tenure here uh, that we can be proud of. Okay. Uh, Pat? I was just going to play devil's advocate just because. <laughs> um, but no, I grew up, I grew up in Gaysville. Uh, I got dropped off there as a kid. And at the time when I got dropped off, they dropped us off at 107. Um, but uh, I just, I could see where there's kind of a, con a conflict of, of, of it just because, does it make sense to have a sidewalk on the bridge? There's no other sidewalk in Gaysville. You don't have one on one side, you don't have it on the other. And when you get across the bridge, they have a yellow line there that you know doesn't make any sense because the road's not even wide enough to have a yellow line. So you're worried about them crossing the bridge, but what about when they get across the bridge? <laughs> yeah, and those things all can be discussed. The quick answer is this might not be the perfect solution, but right yeah. now it's one that we we have the federal government's lines behind the bill. And once we get that sidewalk there, the logical next thing is let's extend either end. And that's something we can do with town dollars, short dollars, to do it. But right now, I went down yeah. River Road, turning left. I was going a little too fast. I turned left, and there was a senior citizen standing right there. Holy moly. We can't help um, We can't let that happen. So, I, Patrick, I, I understand that, but mm -hmm. it's... Let me ask you this. Everybody think about walking across the bridge. Would you feel safer walking in the street or walking on the sidewalk? And it's as simple as that. Whether we're 79 or whether we're nine years old, uh, we all deserve having a sidewalk. Pedestrians deserve to have an equal right. Mm -hmm. Plus, when you're on the bridge, the only place you have to go is into the water. <laughs> yeah. If you have a oncoming on that issue. too. <laughs> right. That's against our regulations. We have sciences. Don't jump off the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> we just ignored it when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> so when is the um, this? You want to just want us to come up with a formal um, discussion next at our next meeting um, we want to invite the select board to understand there um, or can we get information from the select board as to their decision and to their process as to what has gotten them to the place where they are that they um, do not want a sidewalk there I certainly will uh, try to get there's nothing in writing I looked at all their minutes I was there when I Propose this sidewalk. Um, there's some shadows, what they're talking about. I'll try to get that, but I think this is our decision first. And once we've got a decision, then then it, it's very possible we need to uh, also meet with the select board. But uh, um, you can go either way. I think right now we got to figure out what and why and uh, figure it out. Um, the one thing I have heard was that uh, they're concerned that uh, it would increase maintenance costs. And I don't see that, but we can discuss that when we have more time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that on the agenda so um, we can um, have a discussion and possible action uh, or, or a, um, a plan. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you very much, Bill, for bringing that to our attention. Sure. I'm four minutes over. <laughs> You're okay. Okay. Um, so that is it for the discussion portion. We move on to um, number 10, executive session for a uh, real estate matter. Do we have the proper language to, to have a motion for that, please? It, it literally can be that. <laughs> that. The board needs to enter into executive session to discuss a real estate matter that you know could put the board at jeopardy of early indications, and that you're inviting in Vic and Catherine and the administration. I think all the administration can join this conversation. Okay. I move that we enter such executive session. Second. Okay, I have a motion <laughs> and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Hi. 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 Okay. <laughs> Are you all set? Oh. Okay, great. Um, so we have exited executive session and there was no action taken. Uh, 11, new hires or resignations? Yes. So um, has been hired. Her name is Lainey Sinclair. She comes to us from the Breton area. Um, her background includes teaching photography in the Air Force and military. Oh, cool. And then she went back to school and got her teaching license, and she's been a special ed teacher. Uh, she was someone who kind of finished half a year, so she's a special ed teacher, and now she's coming to us. So she was a special ed teacher within our district? or No, within like the, I believe it's... Queen Chi, I didn't oh, want to say that. Yep. So she comes to us. Great, that's exciting. It Looking is. Forward to um, welcoming her. Yep, and then I do have some interviews scheduled this week to finish up, hopefully. Um, and then as of this afternoon, uh, Corinna Dodson, our 456 classroom teacher and math and science teacher here at Stockbridge, uh, handed in her resignation. Oh, boy. So that's too bad. We will um, make moves, and our goal is to figure out how to staff everything universally as we move through the week with staff we have if needed, because that's our first yeah. mm. decision. So we are looking for a um, we need first, two teachers. Two teachers. The first and second grade position, which is one, and then a, a fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah. Position. And I have an interview scheduled on Thursday for the first and second grade position. Right. But Look at that. That's Raja, the first That's thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Two different configurations not going on. <laughs> and who was it we had? A new job, wasn't there? A new job. Andrew Frisch will be our four five classroom teacher in uh, Rochester and he'll teach English language arts and humanities for four five six. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Okay. All right, well thank you. Um is there any public comment? No, okay. So we're going to move on to our next meeting date is going to be Monday, September 9th at the Rochester campus. Um, is there any future agenda items that I need to put on now? And if not, we can um, just email me or Jamie as the weeks go along. Okay. Hearing none, uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Great discussions.